Hey, good morning, everybody. Let's go ahead and begin with lesson two, liquid consonants and semivowels, finding core and connection in the voice. So in the previous video, we talked about breathing consonants and voiced consonants. Uh, one of the concepts I introduced was breathe as if your life depends on it and sing as if your life depends on it. So meaning in the same amount of effort that you put into uh, your breathing just to keep you sustained, do the same or do even more so when you're singing. Bring the vocal folds together, energize, and just make beautiful sounds. As well, develop and maximize the efficiency so that the core sound can be realized. And so for today, we're going to help that out just a little bit. Before we get to, before we open up to vowels, let's look at liquid consonants and semivowels, the bridge and core of connection, at least in my opinion. So liquid consonants, right? The two consonants that we're going to look at are L and R. So the liquid consonants, in my opinion, allows you to pinpoint the direction of the resonance, right? L, R, 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 and it really zones in on just the vocal folds. And it kind of gets the tongue out of the way. If you're not careful, the tongue completely gets in the way. So just be aware of that. It allows you to carve out the upper harmonics in your voice, right? R and it really just keeps you here as opposed to having to worry about the weight or the color of the vowel. It's very thin sometimes. It really just pin pinpoints on the vocal folds. So my recommendation is octave slides, right? So if we start on B flat, so right about there, right? So B flat is pretty low for me. But I don't have to worry about weight, right? I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to sound like a profundo or something that's outside of my voice. I'm just finding the connection. So right there, we can make the transition to subharmonic. And instead of sliding, you can slide if you want, or you can just do the octave drop. And see how the L really just allows you to zone in on where that harmonic is. Going down. So I can't really push my way through this. I have, I'm almost forced to focus on what's happening here. The great thing about that is that it just really gets me to where I need to be, which for subharmonics is great. If you're using strobas or vocal fry, it helps you find that, right? And the cool thing is if I start really high, I can allow the folds to lengthen and then bring, sometimes I'm able to bring that length into the, the lower part and the sound is more consistent. Let's try it out. Let's see if that works. So up here, actually it's an octave lower, but right there. As long as I touch it, right? And that's okay, because eventually... I'm going to be able to do more than just touch those notes, but be able to mix that together. A perfect fifths and fourths. I uh, didn't want to skip that over, but just wanted to get to the last part. But perfect fifths, right? As opposed to the... So... Let's use the R, the R sound. See how brighter that is and how it lives in that 
sort of nastier sound. It, typically, the R isn't really that great because it what it does is it grabs all those sounds and then it just kind of morphs it, which is why we don't typically use we don't typically like to stay on the R, especially in choir. <laughs> But instead of doing, let's do up to the fifth. So try that. like I can transition into subharmonic now. Let's go one step down just to keep it more stable. So starting on that low A flat, right? See how you can't add any weight, right? It has to be focused. If you pop up the octave, then try it again. Sometimes closing your mouth helps. Let's do one more. And see where that happens. And you can switch between L and R. So the L focuses and carves it out. The R tends to allow it to morph more into a vowel if you open up to it. And then let's do five note scales, right? Ooh. Starting at that F, right? So that's that's where we want to bridge that gap, especially for bass, bass, baritone. If you can bring your subharmonic up that high and keep it consistent, uh, you can make it seamless. So let's try right there A in A now. R L R L One more R L So that L and R really just allows you to morph, carve, and open when needed, but not all the way to the vowel yet, because you're still focused on pinpointing where that direction of the resonance feels like it's being. Um, I, I don't like saying directing the resonance, but I, it's to me, I prefer that term over placement because placement means you have to physically put it somewhere, but direction just means it, ha it starts from here, and then you just kind of aim it where you need it to go. Sometimes that helps, sometimes it doesn't, uh, depending on who you are and how you visualize. But let's go to chord arpeggios now. So pump up the octave, right? Arpeggios really help as well, and you can keep that. And what it does is it just connects everything, right? Uh, we're usually afraid of the very low subharmonic or the very high, and sometimes we're even afraid of the middle. And what I'm trying to get you to do is to make them all equal, right? The weight feels like they're different, but then the connection is all the same. If we can keep this free and allow it to do what it needs to do and just allow that asymmetry of the folds to kind of creep in a little bit so that we can jump down the octave without forcing our voice down the octave, then we will most likely 
be successful. So moving on to the semivowel, which are W and Y, so W and Y. The semivowels allows you to open up to the vowel, right? W, Y, W, W, Y. Right? It keeps the folds together, and then it allows that vowel to just side um, to just come out. It allows the vowel to really take shape and form. What it also does, it is it hides the true fold subharmonic artifacts, right? You know that. Uh, 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 uh. But if you use the W, because it's also carving out sound, but then opening up to the vowel, you can shift those sounds immediately and get you there to where you need to be, right? Whoa, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a high E flat if we go down. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yo, yo, yo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That can get me there as well. And you'll notice that the bottom end tends to lose some definition as I t work on the middle, or vice versa, or if I work on the top, I lose some in the middle. That typically, it, it just kind of changes as you go. So you just you just need to be aware of it and find it again. It's not like your range kind of crushed together. It's more of just finding out where it is. So the recommendation is octave slides, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Right here. Whoa, whoa. Notice that the octave slides and the semivowel is harder to get the lower sometimes. It's some, it just it all depends, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So choose your vowel, choose your semivowel as well. Perfect fifths and fourths, the same idea. Make sure you go through that fifth. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not coming in yet. Probably right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then use your fourths. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if it breaks apart, switch over to the W. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you'll notice how my voice also does the same thing, right? So don't worry about the inconsistencies just allow the vowel to take care of the weight uh, as it is as we're waking up as we are going throughout the day we just have to find out where that is in our voice so also do five note descending scales that don't really help connect and bridge and chord, ar chord arpeggios as well so with all that said here's what we've achieved today right that was all from lesson one and then for this a lesson hopefully you were able to bring your vocal folds together and keep the weight off you were able to carve out the harmonics and prepare for the subharmonic as well open up properly to the vowel sound with little to no artifacts from the subharmonic transitions and if you were able to do all of that then you are good i recommend this um, before jumping into trying to get that perfect sound or get that huge uh, vocal sound just work on liquid consonants semi-vowels Working on uh, lesson one as well as work on lesson one again and see where that takes you and just continue to do this. You don't have to have a piano. It's just the piano helps. But the idea is to bring the folds together and allow them to do what they need to do. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. 
Check in next time. We will have lesson three coming up and also a few other videos that are on the list. So take care of yourself and we'll see you next time.